Welcome back to Expedition Haunts. Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios Florida began on October 25th, 1991 as Fright Nights with One Haunted House The Dungeon of Terror. The event has grown throughout the years and has been held at Universal Orlando ever since. The second year of the event ran for five nights and was the very first year of Bill and Ted's excellent Halloween adventure. I'm Ted and I'm Bill and we're Bill and Ted! <laughs> While over the years the houses would change, the amount of houses increased each year, popularity of the event increased, icons came and went and some years didn't even come at all, one show remained a consistent staple of the event until its farewell tour at Halloween Horror Nights 27 in 2017. Oh, it's like most excellent! Located at Halloween Horror Nights 2 in 1992, a new show was added to the special event running just five nights. Many other shows came and went during the lifetime of the event, but only one persisted. Located in the Wild West stage, the Bill and Ted show emphasized parody and satire and a good time over the scares found in other parts of the park. The show you're about to watch is a joke. It's not real. We should all be able to come together and make fun of pop culture from the past year without losing our damn minds. Based on the recently released Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure in 1989, as well as Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey in 1991, the very first show followed the duo played by two different sets of actors. What's your last Toby name? Miller <laughs> and Joel Hello, Sandemus! Hello, everybody, how you doing? <laughs> Be excellent to each other. Each performing two shows per night trying to capture the energy of Bill and Ted. The very first show set in the old western town began with a gunfight between a sheriff and a robber. Interrupted by the phone booth, Bill and Ted formed the plan of going back in time to go trick or treating. Instead, the robber decided to hijack the phone booth and round up a new bank robbing gang from the future. After he disappears, Bill reveals he has a portable phone which Rufus gave him to call back the booth. After he dials the number, they are surprised when instead of the booth, the DeLorean arrives with Doc Brown. Doc Brown tells the duo they need to bring back the robber, but first they decide to test it out on famous musicians to see if it's even possible. When they do succeed in returning the booth back, the robber is joined by Freddy Krueger, the Terminator, and Jason. A chase occurs over the town and the sheriff succeeds in stopping the bank robber. To celebrate the victory, Bill and Ted hold a most excellent concert with the musicians Madonna, MC Hammer, the Blues Brothers, and even Elvis. This format would essentially set up the show for the next 26 years. Special merchandise was created showing Bill and Ted with the Universal Monsters and more for the event, and the show received a huge following right from the start. The original four actors for the show embraced the roles and were huge fans of the movie, claiming to have seen it multiple times in preparation for their roles. Yeah, I've watched it about 550,000 times. <laughs> The Bill and Ted show remained at the Wild West Theatre returning each year of Horror Nights following. The show carried the same format, adding more and more pop culture references each year. 1996 characters included the returning Terminator, James Bond, Mulder and Scully, Boba Fett and more, and ended with Kiss singing Rock and Roll All Night to close out the show. Many characters would return multiple times throughout the show's history, including Mulder and Scully and the DeLorean again in 1998. The following year in 1999, J. Michael Roddy took over as show director and writer for the show. After co-directing in years previous, he stated that he would change the formula this year slightly and created a twist in the setting, creating Bill and Ted's shagadelic Halloween adventure, as well as now adding musical numbers throughout the show rather than just at the end. The Bill and Ted actors at the time, Doug McDonald and Kevin Vincent, brought a lot of truth to the roles and were relied upon to keep the integrity of the characters Bill and Ted. The 1999 show was rated the highest ever for Universal Entertainment offerings at the time. Michael Roddy was asked following the show in 1999 if anyone thought the characters were too old, and he replied that he thought the characters were timeless. The show continued on as usual in the year 2000 with many characters from pop culture of the year. Steve Irwin, Ethan Hunt, Scooby-Doo, Mr. Burns and many, many more, with Eminem and NSYNC rounding out the show. In 2001, it was the final year the show would be held at the Wild West Stunt Show in Universal Studios. The same format continued with a mix of the year's pop culture characters ending with a game of the weakest link, and Bill and Ted winning by answering that question, what number am I thinking of? 69, dudes! <gasps> 2002 was the 12th year of Halloween Horror Nights, and the first year the event had taken place at Islands of Adventure. Held in the Toon Lagoon Amphitheater for the first time, the show opened with a recap of the past shows to the Van Halen song Panama. The main villain for this year was Dr. Evil, and included characters from Scooby-Doo, Star Wars, Spider-Man, the Powerpuff Girls, and Gandalf the Grey, who was actually played by Mike Aiello. 
2002 marks the first year of the show for Mike Aiello, who will become a huge part of not just Bill and Ted, but the whole Horror Nights event. After performing in the show in 2002 and assisting with writing, he eventually went on to be writer and director of the show from 2006 to 2010. When asked in 2003 if Mike Aiello saw a long future for Bill and Ted at Universal, he responded by saying, I think William and Theodore have a few more adventures left in them. The show would continue in Islands of Adventures Toon Lagoon Theatre with a similar format with returning characters Dr. Evil and in 2005 a Willy Wonka storyline up until the year 2006. At Universal's Horror Night Sweet 16, the duo would return to the Wild West Theatre, which had now been rethemed to the Fear Factor Live Theatre, with the event returning to Universal's original studio park. Tonight we are celebrating 15 years of most excellent adventures right here at Universal Orlando. And we are so totally stoked to be back in our original venue, the Wild 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 West Stunt World. Something strange is afoot in our venue. Yeah, yeah, Ted, this place is now called Beer Factor Live. Oh yeah, this is where park guests come and risk their lives doing nasty stunts for prizes. Who, what do they win? A t-shirt. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but it's 100% cotton though. No. Excellent! 2006's show remains one of the most celebrated shows of the whole run, with many people claiming it to be the best show of Bill and Ted. Hello, boys! Dr. Evil! Luther, the greatest criminal mastermind in the world today. Lex Luthor claims to have brought the land Universal sits on and is going to destroy it to build a theme park in his name. The final show of the run has been known to play up on the improv and change parts of the show. The final show in 2006 did in fact see Dr. Evil take over as the villain to much fan love. Hello boys, Dr. Evil! Again! Wrong! No you fools, I'm Lex Luthor. Actually, Mr. Luthor, The juveniles are quite correct. Dr. Evil! Oh, Again! Again! Yeah. You didn't even have a popular movie this year. In 2017, the final show, it was referenced Dr. Evil had been asleep behind the stage since 2006. The show would remain in its original stage until the end of its run in 2017. In 2007, Universal began cracking down on both videotaping and photos during the show. The 2007 show included another Dr. Evil tease with his music playing only to reveal Britney Spears with her head shaven. Mike Aiello's last show was in 2010 when he moved on to other roles within Halloween Horror Nights. He would still be involved with the show though until the end of its run. Eventually, Jason Horn would take over and finish out the director's role for the show with Mike Aiello moving more into a mentor role, similar to how Michael Roddy did for him all those years ago. For the next years, the show continued to be a staple of Halloween Horror Nights and to parody the year's pop culture. While many actors played the roles of Bill and Ted, two stand out as taking the role and really making it their own. Ted getting into the most righteous trick or treating. <laughs> Looks like some people gave out more than candy this year, dude. <laughs> Check it out a bottle of Old Spice. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Look at your man. Now back to us. Sadly, he isn't us. Look down, look up, we're on a stage. Excellent. I'm Bruce Briston Esquire. And I am Ted Theodore Logan. And together we are Wild Stallions. <laughs> Jason Perry and PJ played the roles for multiple years and became fan favourites up until its very last show. Many iconic recurring jokes would occur throughout these years and the fan base would reach a cult following. <laughs> I'm king of the world! And my world, I mean Avatar world, coming to a theme park near you in your 2085! If anyone still gives a shit! <laughs> now though, we have to unfortunately talk about the end. 2017, as expected by everyone, the show was announced a return as usual, but this news came with the tagline, The Farewell Tour. Many people were confused. Was it the end? Was it the story for the year? What happened? Ted? We're dead, dude. Universal eventually announced though that they will be taking one final adventure. Not only a shock to the Horror Nights fanbase, but also the creators of the show. The show was rewritten two weeks before its first show in to include an ending worthy of saying goodbye to these iconic characters. Mike Aiello stated Jason Horn wrote a perfect goodbye. 
Easter eggs were added to include the tiniest detail, such as Death using the exact same phone version used in the very ever first show of Bill and Ted. Emotions ran high every time a fan watched the show, as everyone knew the end was coming. Why was the end coming? Nobody actually knows the official reason, but speculation included that the Fear Factor Live Stadium was going to be demolished. It wasn't. The show caused issues for Universal due to the content. Definitely probably true. A Bill and Ted sequel was coming, and they did not want the show to conflict with that, as well as the rights. I personally feel it has more to do with the rights of the Bill and Ted characters, but whatever the real reason, many fans were left disappointed. One thing was for sure though, Halloween Horror Nights would never be the same again. Focus, focus. <laughs> but why would Disney base an entire Halloween show on a movie that's almost 25 years old? Yeah, that's so stupid. Yeah, that's dumb. The success of the show reinventing itself each year and running for a huge 26 years is unheard of, not just for any show, but especially a theme park show. For the final guest show, fans started queuing up for wristbands as early as 8am, and the final show did not disappoint. Fan favourite characters returned, the cast added their own touches to the performances, Dr. Evil even read a list of old Universal rides a page long and ended with Terminator, claiming, oh, I don't know that one. Bill and Ted responds with, you know, the one that says, I'll be back to which Dr. Evil replied, you won't be. The crowd spent most of the show standing and giving each character a standing ovation. Doc Brown returned for one final time and to end it off, the cast all came out in Bill and Ted outfits. The final show went on for nearly an hour. The only thing left was for Bill and Ted to exit one last time in the phone booth with Rufus, leaving the fans of the show emotional and craving more one last time. Will there be a reunion tour? We can only hope. Has any other show in theme park history achieved what this show has in 26 years? The fan base, the community of cast and crew, and a staple of Halloween Horror Nights? No, and it's unlikely anything else ever will. Halloween Horror Nights would never be the same again. 26 years, the cast and crew poured everything they had into making the show special, and the memory of what they had achieved will never be forgotten by Halloween Horror Nights fans around the world. <laughs> The following year, Halloween Horror Nights 28, Academy of Villains took over in the iconic theatre as the only show of the year. The memory of Bill and Ted at the event though is not something that will be able to be replicated or replaced anytime soon. The show will be greatly missed, but as Def said, All of this will seem like a dream, but one you were lucky enough to have. Bill, my friend, Yes, Ted, my friend, this has been a most excellent adventure. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Haunts. Were you a fan of the Bill and Ted show at Halloween Horror Nights? What do you think should replace it going forward? Let me know in the comments below, and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.